Welcome to the Fall Estate. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Ever since the election, there's been a lot of talk about the immigration issue. I have with me today Dr. Alvaro Huerta, assistant professor at California State Polytechnic University, Pomona. Thank you so much, sir, for coming in. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, are you a Christian? No, I'm an atheist. You're an atheist? Yes, yes. That's amazing. Yes. Well, actually, I was raised Catholic. Right. You're the first atheist Hispanic person I met. I'm not going to bite, so don't worry. I'm telling you. <laughs> so you were a Catholic. And then what happened? Yes, yes, yes. I come from a big family. There's, there's eight of us. And every Sunday we would go to church. So I was fine with it. You know, I did the first communion. Uh, but by the time I went to uh, UCLA as a freshman, uh, I just, I realized or I learned that there was other options of, of believing and not believing. I didn't know that was an option not to believe. Really? Well, as you know, when you grow up in a certain culture, whatever culture that is, with your parents, your community, and you don't even know that you're Mexican, it was, it's not until later that when you come in contact with other groups that they tell you that you're Mexican or that, that you're different. But I never felt anything growing up because everybody was the same. Everybody was Catholic. Everybody was Catholic. So it was taken for granted that it's, it's just, it's the, that's just the way it is. So when there was people talking about that they don't believe, to me, it, it was, I didn't, I saw that as like they were sinning. Right. They were doing something wrong. But as time passed, I didn't see that as a problem. I accepted it. How old were you when you went to UCLA? 17. So up until 17, you believed in God. Yes, yes, yes. And then at, go to UCLA, you believe there is no God. Right, right. So maybe you did not believe in the beginning then. You were just taught that, but it wasn't your own personal belief in God. That's why it was easy to turn away from it. My parents were very traditional. They, they came from, the, right. from a rural uh, countryside of, uh, the countryside of Mexico, Michoacan, uh, from a small rancho. And actually, they're very conservative. I've always been like, like the good son. You know, like whatever my parents told me to do, I did. Oh, and I, I grew up in a very violent community. Uh, right. You know, gangs, drugs, you know, police abuse, everything that you could imagine. You know, that, that was my experience. And I never, ex I never went that route. I didn't see it like as a morality issue. I saw it more like, if I do this, then my father's going to oh, you know, bring out the belt. You know? so That's it's kinda good. Like, yeah, the, like the yeah. discipline. That's right. So, so in that sense, he, he set up that morality for me. Like, yeah, you don't do this and you don't do that. And, and, and a lot of it's out of fear of right. not doing certain things. Yeah. So what happened when you went back home and said, hey, Dad, Mom, I don't believe in God. There is no God. Oh, no, I didn't tell her. No, you, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't wash my clothes or, <laughs> or make me uh, tacos anymore. <laughs> so you did not she tell her? She would cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, do they know now that you don't believe there is a God? No, no, they both passed away. Oh, they did. So they never did find out? No, no. Now that you don't mm -hmm. believe in God, mm -hmm. where do you get your values from? I've always thought about, you know, how would I like people to treat me? And I would treat them that way. I've always had negative experiences with certain professors because I was Mexican. They, they didn't think I can keep up with the rest of the, the kids. How do you know that that's what they well, were Well, they thinking? told me. They say because you're Mexican, you can't keep up with the rest of the kids? One way or another, that, that was the message. But they never said it to you? At one point, one said it, yes. But that doesn't mean all the rest felt that No, way. no, not all of them. But mm -hmm. so, so for me, it was that having those experiences, like negative experiences, I act differently, I act opposite to that. So right. that, that's a lot of my values of the way I behave. It's, it's a lot of it's based on the way I was treated growing up. And even when I, now I'm a father, I said to myself, I'm not gonna be like my father in, in the sense of being very too strict or, or too disciplinary. Right. Doesn't mean that I didn't love him. Right. Doesn't mean he didn't do a good job, but there was certain aspects that I, I wasn't going to I was going to do it differently. Are you like your mother? Yes, I'm more like my mother. She, she was more warm, more oh. giving. So what did it feel like to be more like a woman than a man? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I have both. <laughs> oh, their traits. but you're more like your mother. More in the, the generous part, but in, in terms of the toughness, you know, I'm, I'm more like my father. Oh, okay. You know, you know, my father was a tough guy. Okay. And, you know, he grew up in an environment where they were... It was like the Hatfields and the McCoys, <laughs> you know, they were like shooting each other. And, yeah. and so he, he grew up and he saw violence, he experienced violence. You know, so me growing up in the projects and, and coming out of there, there's nothing that anybody can say or do that, that will make, make me fear or make me 
uh, be intimidated. Right. You wrote a blog post called The Day I Learned I Was Mexican and Poor. Can you right. tell us in short a little bit more about that? My family, they're from Mexico. Uh, they migrated from the rural countryside from, from Michoacan to, to Tijuana, more urban area, the, the, the border. And then they moved to, uh, to Hollywood. And, and then after we moved to, uh, to the housing projects in East LA, Ramona Gardens. My father came uh, during the Bracero program in the 1950s. So he was a, a guest worker. So he didn't come here illegally? No, he didn't. And then after in the 60s, he was working as a farm worker with a work permit. And then when they, when they settled in Tijuana in the 60s, my mother was uh, a domestic worker. She would come back and go back and forth uh, to uh, clean homes in San Diego and then go back. Right. And, that, and I was born here in, in uh, Sacramento. Are you like an ankle baby? That's what, that's what Republicans would call me, yes. My mother, that's amazing. I never met an ankle baby before. <laughs> and I'm kind of thin to be an anchor, but yes. They, what was it like being an ankle baby? Well, my mother was a rational actor, <laughs> and she said she was uh, pregnant with me in, in Tijuana. I was conceived there. <laughs> She decided for me to be born in Sacramento. But getting back to your question, which is related to that, so we grew up in, in housing projects, and like I said, we were all poor, and we were not, there's a myth about people thinking like, oh, if you're poor, you're not happy. That's not true. Right, I we agree. Were, we were playing out in the street. Yeah, I was poor growing up too, I right, didn't know right. it. And I was, I was part of the program, which I, I didn't agree with, this, this integration program, this busing program, of, of busing poor kids uh, from East LA and other areas. To, that was a big mistake. That when was a Blast big mistake. did that, I thought it was a mistake. Right. They should have just improved their schools, not bust them away from the neighborhood. And I agree. I mean, because I don't see things as, just, just to be clear, I'm not like a liberal or a conservative. I don't, I don't see things, I'm not partisan in that sense. So when we, when we got, de when, not deported, I wasn't deported, but when, when, we, when we got bused to a non-white school in Sunland, Tahanga, Monk Gleason Junior High, we were all Poor and we're all Mexicans. Like I said, we didn't really, we didn't know it at the time. Right. And when we got there, they were throwing, the white kids were throwing rocks at us. It was like Birmingham, Alabama. They started throwing rocks at us. They started carrying us uh, wetbacks, beaners, Right. Well, riders. that's what normally happens when you impose yourself on, on others. You know, people have to love you freely. You mm -hmm. just can't go and put yourself off on people. They're going to reject you. Well, I was only 10 or 11, so I didn't really ask for it. I just right, and that's they, why they just, we, we yeah, both they just agree signed, that should not have happened. They just signed me up, and I wasn't traumatized physically or mentally because of, you know, the neighborhood that we grew up with was pretty tough. I mean, you, you couldn't really do anything that right. we didn't see already. But it, w it was a shock, like a culture shock, because I didn't... It wasn't the first time I've seen white people because they were my teachers, and they were all good to me. But it was the first time I've experienced somebody you know, saying uh, like derogatory terms like to my face. I didn't know that existed, Yeah. right? Because I was, I was too young and naive. And I didn't even think like Beaner was a put down because I thought everybody ate beans. So, I, so some I didn't understand, like they'll call me lowrider Beaner. And it's like, <laughs> what are you talking about? And then later on, and when, when I got to UCLA and now that I'm a professor, I, w I write about these things. And at the time I was ashamed to be poor. So did you ever overcome that? I mean, do you think that, did you start to believe that white people were bad people as a result of that experience? No, I didn't think that they were bad. I just thought that because I didn't see the positive role models of Latinos, I just did, I, I felt ashamed of being, it wasn't even ashamed of being Mexican, it was about being poor. Oh, okay. So like when I was at UCLA, but the first seminar that we had, we went around the table and all the, kid, all the kids there were, were mixed, but they had black and, and Latino. And everybody went around and, and so-and-so was like, oh, my father's a lawyer. And right. these, are, these are black kids, you know, middle class. And then uh, this other person's, oh, my, my dad's an ambassador from Mexico. You know, I mean, UCLA is a world-renowned right. university. Yeah. Oh, but my father's, you know, he, he owns a company in Venezuela. And I was so embarrassed by the time it got to me. And I just said, you know, my parents are workers. That's it, I, that's all I said. I understand that. And then like, 20, 30 years later, or 20 years later, or whatever, however long it's been, I felt like ashamed of, of, of that, of, of, of being, uh, coming from that background. Did your mother intentionally have you in this country so that she can become a, to stay here? Yes, she would be yes. A, how do you feel about that? I feel good, she made a good choice. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have been at UCLA or Berkeley, so it was uh, a good choice on her part. Oh, uh, okay. 
You know, she's a very <laughs> rational person and she was really smart. Um, you know, I've written books, I've done TED Talks, and, and, and I've toured all over the world in, in, in lecturing and, and things of that nature. Uh, my brother's a world famous artist. And I'll tell you something. Compared to my mother, I'm lazy because she was very entrepreneurial. Yeah. Very driven. We tend very, to be that smart. way because the parents in those days didn't have much, so they worked harder. And then their kids, they give them a lot, make sure they get the best, so they work not right. as hard. Most American kids are lazy and, you know, they're not as driven. Yeah. If you want, if America wants to save itself, they need to learn from the immigrants and, and their work ethic and, and their family values. And I agree. So there's a lot there. So let me ask, um, do you think it's right mm -hmm. that women, whether they're Hispanics or whatever, right. can come across the border and drop a baby and, be, and stay here? Well, when you, she had a work permit, so for her, it didn't say anything in the work permit, she couldn't do that. So. No, I'm asking you though. They're yes, all... I don't have a problem with that. So yeah. you think it's right? I think it's a, it's a rational choice. But do you think it's right? Yes, yes. You think it's right that they can break the law, cross the border, and stay in the United States just by dropping a baby here? Well, I don't believe the way the laws are set up. I think we can do it differently. But you do think it's right that these women should be able to do this? I think when they do it, I, I think it's, they're, do, they're, they're being rational beings. They're, they're doing what's right for them. And what's well, right I for understand them. if I lived in Mexico, I'd try to come mm -hmm. here too by any means necessary. Mm -hmm. But do you think it's right that they should be able to just walk across the border, drop this baby, and be a citizen? And stay here? Well, not become a citizen, but stay here? Oh, yes, yes. I that's, don't have a, you think that's right? Uh, yes, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Okay, you think it's right. Do you identify with your race? I don't identify with my race or my class. I identify... I believe uh, it, that I'm a human being. For example, a lot of times when people talk about immigrants, I don't even want to call them immigrants. I, I want to refer to them as human beings. Why like, don't you want to call them immigrants? Because a lot of times when you put labels on people, then, then you're, it's easy to exploit them. It's easy to take advantage of them. So if you, if you say to somebody, you know, you're a citizen and you're an immigrant, then therefore... But when you call them immigrants, you're putting a label on them, right? You just, oh, you just want to call them human beings. Pretty much. How about human beings who broke the law? Well, human beings without legal status would be <laughs> fine with me. <laughs> so, I just, uh, my concern in general, I understand that we need labels and as an academic, yeah. we work with labels. So I understand we that part. We can't live without labels. My concern is that when a, when a label has a, like a negative connotation where you where now n to say immigrant is, it has become like a dirty word because the way it, because of the politics. Immigrant is not a, a dirty word. Illegal immigrant or illegal, you don't like the words illegal aliens, right? Yeah, I don't like that either. Because you were so, did you tell my producer you didn't want to say, me to say illegal aliens? Well, she, when she invited me to the show, I didn't know much about the show. Right. And then when I read about it and I, and I read about you and, and your comments and, and your books and all that, I said to myself, maybe I shouldn't go. And then I said to myself, oh, why not? You know, he's inviting me. That's right. But I don't, I don't want to be in a show where, where I'm, I'm put, like if I'm on trial or, or if, if I'm running for office or anything like that, because I'm not. Right. So that, that was my only concern. So you don't have a problem with me saying illegal aliens? Well, you could say it, but I'm, I'm not, it's not something that I accept or, oh, or okay. I find it. A, I, find, I don't think it, it's something Christian-like. You know, to say illegal aliens? To say illegal aliens because... You know, when I was growing up, I used to watch this, this program, the, uh, My Uncle Martian or whatever it's called. Right. I forget yeah, that I remember program. that. <laughs> right, so like an old program. I used to yes. work, work, right, so th that's, to me, that's an alien because it was a Martian and, and people that are green and have the little antennas, you know. Um, <laughs> but who far is it? Is it my fault that I have to call them that? No, no, because no, no. It was them. It was, they who, it was them who broke the law to come here. So they were aliens from a foreign country and they broke the law to come to my country. So is it my fault that I have to call them illegal aliens, or is it their fault that they broke the law to get here, creating that title for themselves? Well, it's the law's fault. I, th I think we should no, no, change, no. I, th I think we should change the laws to not, not to demonize uh, immigrants and not to treat them. Well, how are you demonizing them? Well, by putting them this, this label that they're But illegal. if they didn't come across the borders illegally, we wouldn't call them that. If well, they came through the yeah. front door, we'd just say immigrants. Well, the people that came, the, the, the ancestors of the people that invaded Mexico and took, you know, took the Mexican land, I mean, do we call them invaders? 
If that's what they did. You know, do, <laughs> do I call their ancestors, you know, the, the people that... So they, it's, it's their fault then that they're called that because they are breaking the law, not the American citizens, right? Well, the law itself needs to change. I don't, I don't accept the law. I know, but I, I think whether you want to change the law or not. No, I understand what you I just you're want to make it clear who fault is it. The ones who are breaking the law to come here or the ones who are calling them illegals because they're doing that? Well, I, I believe that these people do not... People do not leave their country just because they, one day they want to wake up and, and separate from their families. I understand that. You know, I know you're, you're, you, you believe in the family and you're, right. you're, you have those values. And like I was telling you about my parents and most Catholics, they believe exactly like you do. Exactly. Very traditional uh, and so on and so forth. Like Trump, I'm against NAFTA. So this is where, this is where I see your, your question where, where it's, a, it's problematic. NAFTA with the free trade agreement with Canada, United States, and Mexico, create a situation where the United States can go into and disrupt those local economies by producing corn or at a, at a cheaper rate. Right. Where it forces people that have these small plots, you know, to leave their land because they can't compete against the United I States. I totally understand and why that's, they and want it, to come. it forces them. Yeah, so I do understand that. But I still need an answer. Who fault is it? My fault that I have to call them illegal aliens, or is it their fault? It's the government's fault. No, no, no. They're the one breaking the law. Mexico don't even allow people to break to come across their borders. If they, if it was just a question of choice and people like individual choice, they woke up like I want to do. But you're still States. running away from the, my question. Well, because the question, the pre, I don't agree with the premise of the question. The the problem is that the government, it's the U.S. government and U.S. government policies the ones that Trump is against, like NAFTA, are the same policies that produce immigration to begin with. Technically, they are breaking the law. And are they Te coming? Technically, uh, yes, yes, because of... Uh, right, and are I, they I, aliens? I they're coming from a... I wouldn't call them aliens, but... But they are aliens in that they're coming from a, another country to another one. If they were coming from Mars, I would call them aliens, <laughs> but I, that I cannot concede. But you do agree that they are breaking the law to come here? The way the law is written, uh, yes, yes, All right. yes. I appreciate that. You predicted that Hillary Clinton would become the 45th president yeah. back in 2014. Uh, what was your reaction to the election? I was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked. Uh, first, I thought that Hillary was a flawed candidate. Yeah, lying, I, cricket Hillary. She was a flawed candidate. Do you agree she, with me that she's lying, cricket Hillary? Well, I don't, I don't not in that terms, I, in different <laughs> ways. She wasn't a good candidate because she had too much baggage. Yeah. I thought she was going to win because I, I felt in looking at the candidates that were running uh, on the Republican Party, they were, they were all pretty much, uh, you know, to put it in academic terms, they were lame candidates. You no, know, Trump Chris is Christie, the only one that would have beat her. Jeb Bush, no charisma, yeah. uh, no ability to communicate I haven't with seen Jeb since Trump said, call him, whatever you say. Yeah, low energy Jeb. Yeah, I, no I energy Jeb would have I haven't seen him since. I believe in all that. He's married to a Hispanic woman. Yes, yes, yes. So maybe he went back to Mexico. Yeah, before. there you go, he's a dual <laughs> citizen. <laughs> So, so, the, so with, with Trump, he took advantage of a lot of those vulnerabilities, you know, but I was shocked. And one of the reasons I was shocked, because I did believe the polls, you know, I did believe. But the polls were lying. They were wrong. Yeah. I, I believe because they were saying, when they would show the, and CNN, it's like, oh, there's not enough white voters in these states to vote right. for. Yeah. But they were like, these white voters were, were like a lost tribe in, in Brazil. You know, they just came out of nowhere. Yes. So they just like shocked everybody. <laughs> so I, and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> there's this many people out there. And, and that did shock me because I, I said to myself, I shouldn't, have, I shouldn't have believed them. You know, I shouldn't yeah. have believed the, the analysis that they were providing. Yes. Because when people were being polled, they weren't being honest. That's right. Because they weren't trusting they were the government. They were afraid to be honest about it. Now, I, it might sound like shocking to you, but I believe in a lot of the things like, like the Tea Party people or those type of people, very, very conservative people believe. I don't trust the government, you know, because when Reagan was president, he, he invaded uh, Central America, uh, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and forced many hundreds of Salvadorians to come to this country, forcing them. I don't, I don't, I believe in the Second Amendment. I don't trust the government to have monopoly on guns. Yeah, you know, I, I believe right. that, that, that every human being, every American has a right to, to bear arms. And I agree with That's Trump. That's that Catholic upbringing. Yeah, and, and I believe with Trump against NAFTA and things of that nature. Yeah. I don't so believe. So were you disappointed? 
I was disappointed because of his rhetoric and, and the way he treated women, the way he treated... How does he treat his, women? Well, when he's talking about grab, grabbing their private parts. Have um, you ever spoken that way? Not like that, no. But you've no. said something like that. Wow. How do you look like you've said it? <laughs> <laughs> so you know you've said it. I've never been... I've, Physically, I'm not like a locker room guy, you know. But I'm you have said that stuff like that, Not right? like that, no. But you have like said that. similar stuff. I've been in environments where people said it, but I've never, I'm not running no, for office. No, you have said it too. Oh, not like that. Coming no. from East L.A., you have said <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. So you have said it, right? When I run for office, they're going to use this tape against me. So there goes my nomination <laughs> for the Supreme Court. Uh, so I'm, I'm worried about that. So you I, have said similar things. No, you not might like, not have not said like the exact words that... I've been uh, in an environment where I grew up, people said, and they killed people, they did drugs. I've seen police killed uh, right. my friends. That's why I know you have said I, it. I've seen a lot. but So he didn't treat women like that. He was talking to another guy, as you have done, and that's what guys do. They, they're bragging about how, what they do with women. Oh, yeah, no, I, did, I didn't say that. Yeah. No, you didn't say that, but you no, said I understand similar. what you're saying, but... What it, but you have said similar. No, 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 not like that, not like you, that. Not like that, but something. You have said things like that. Not like what he said, but similar. You can be honest. No, no, not like that. No, no, no. Like I, I know people that are like that. I grew up with people, but there's, there's a, within any group. Well, you group, can tell me later when the show yeah, what you, you said. Yeah, it was happy hour. Within, with, <laughs> when they, within any group, you're going to have a, a group, you're going to have like one or two guys like that, but not the whole group is like that. And so unless unless it's like a frat, a frat house or something yeah. like that, then yes, the whole group can be that way if, if they're consuming liquor and if they're behaving in yeah. a certain way, you know. So why are you saying that he's disrespecting women when you know most, if not all men, do that kind of stuff? No, I know that... A, You're just saying what the liberal feminist... Well, growing, up, no, growing up, I've, I've been in environments where men have talked about that, but it's always been, from my experience, like a minority. So he wasn't being disrespectful to women? He's overall, I think... I wrote an article against Trump, uh, uh, several against Trump. Um, I'm waiting for him to tweet against me. It hasn't happened. Um, so he, one about him being a hustler. I think he hustled white working class voters. All of the nominees. Why do you think that? Because he acted like he was one of them or, or he can relate to them. There were more than just white people who voted for him. You had more black men voted for, Hillary, for Trump than you did Hillary Clinton this time around. Uh, you had more Hispanics voted for the Republican than before. So it wasn't just white people. The majority of the voters were working class white. Right, the, but the still there were other... Yeah, there was other groups. Right, there was other and groups. so why are you not mentioning them? Well, I, I did mention them in my article, but the, the point with Trump is that he, he was very inflammatory. He, he was very uh, offensive to, to many groups. That's not true. Yeah. Well, he was offensive to the godless group, the children of the lie, you know, and the reason that he told the truth, and those people hate the truth, you, you know, the radical homosexuals, the Black Lives Matter, the feminists who hate men, uh, Planned Parenthood who, who are killing the unborn child, selling the body parts for profit, uh, the Latinos who hate white folks. Uh, the, you know, he was offensive to them because he told them the truth. He spoke up to them. He dealt with them. And they've never had that before. They've never had a real man to stand up and deal with them. And so of course they get angry because they've been spoiled getting their way for so long. Well, uh -huh. I don't agree with any of that, but when, when, when he says, when Trump says that Mexico is sending their worst, they're sending rapists, murderers, and criminals, I mean, that's, to me, he's generalizing and and that's being a racist. That's what he, he's calling, he's calling my father, my mother that, and my father's he more He didn't of a, call you a father, mother. And my father's more of a man than Trump. You know, like if he was alive, he, and I even tell, I even told Trump in my, in my article, I said, if you want to talk, you can talk tough. He doesn't know tough. I mean, what, it, what, how tough was his life? Like, you know, one day the dad took away two nannies and now he only had three. I mean, how tough, <laughs> how tough was it? You know, did he ever go to the military? What what did he did he grow up in? in did you go to the military? No, I didn't grow up in military. I, I read my I read my case, but let me ask: yeah. Was he lying when he said that those type of people were coming across the border as well? In any group, you're gonna have a minority. Are you saying that's not happening? That's not happening. In the terms of the way he said it, because he but said, but it is happening. 
some, some but not all. So it is happening. Some, but he said he didn't he did say not some. say all. He, he named said, the type of people no, he said, who are, and some are good. Right. And some are good. Right. When you say that, that means that the most are bad. So no, that would you read. I memorize that. So I, let's go back to this. I actually, have a tattoo so he on is, that thing. He did tell the truth about that happening. You could say that to any group, and the, the but the problem is that you're when, not answering my question. Did was he telling the truth that that was happening? I'll accept that it happens in all groups. So he was all, telling the truth. You should be a lawyer. It, it, it's, a, it's a truth. <laughs> Why should I be a lawyer? Because you're good at the questions. It's, it's true. It, it, I'll accept it in all groups, like in all populations. Well, like you have, just, you no, have let's that, keep the focus on the people coming across the borders. The majority. Why is he telling the truth no, not, when he said you have this type of person coming, this type of person, this type of person, and, and some good ones? Was he telling the truth? He wasn't telling the truth. Because he generalized. Well, you he just said, agreed that they do have that coming across the borders as some, well. Some, but not all. So he was telling the truth then. Like, let's say if you have 100 people come over. No, stay probably with like me. Probably like one or two. Stay with me. That was happening, right? Not the way he phrased it, no. But it was happening. What I'm saying is that he generalized. Was it happening? Some, not all. But it was happening. Yeah, some, yes. So it, did, it was happening. Some, yes. Y yes, it was happening. Some, yes. So he wasn't lying there. He was like, because he said all. He, he said didn't most. say all. He didn't say all. He didn't say most. Now you're not being honest. He said, here's what we have coming across the borders. There goes so my he, chance to be mayor of, of, of L.A. <laughs> That's it. This, this video is going to be used against me in a court of law. <laughs> you know, so. So he wasn't lying. You called the man a liar. You wouldn't want to be called oh, a liar if I'll, you weren't I'll lying. I'm a liar. And I'm a little surprised that it's coming from the background you've come mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. I, w I'm I don't a have a problem pride. calling him a liar. I recall but he wasn't liar. lying. He told the truth about that. You just admitted that. I admit that in any group, whether they're Mexicans or Americans. But like, he wasn't like talking the, about any group. He was talking about the people crossing the border. Yes, like the, like the criminals. That Let's move on. We, we got it clear that you were like lying. The, like the criminals that invaded Iraq. I mean, those are the criminals, not, not, not the criminals that... No, that he's talking about we, here. let's stay with the point. I, 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 I'm glad I finally got you to admit the truth. What do you think about the travel ban that President Trump has on the uh, oh, yeah, those that, seven that, countries? That's a good question. What yes. Muslim are coming I, from? This, this is part of my problem with Trump. I'm an atheist, and there's no reason why I should be defending Muslims. There's no reasons why I should be then defending Hindus or Christians or, or any religious group, because I don't believe in any of that. But what I do believe is that I don't, I don't think that any group should be singled out that way. Uh, I'm against the ban. Uh, it is a Muslim ban. That's but not during true. the campaign, that's You're what he said. You're not telling the truth again. He never called it a Muslim ban. Why are you saying that? Because in the campaign, that's what he said. But he was no, do. he never called it a Muslim ban. You just said he did. That's not true. Yeah, he said it in the campaign. But he didn't call when he put the ban oh, well, no, on those seven yes, countries. Yes. He did not call it a Muslim ban. Right, Isn't right. that true? He did on the. Isn't that in true? In the language, he did not call it that. But so that's then what why it is. are you saying that he did? Because that's, I'm going based on his campaign. But no, you just said promises. he said he, said it he during did the campaign. that. That's not what he said. He did, though. He said during the campaign he's going he's gonna to put a ban on But Muslims. when he, he put that. the ban, he did not call it a Muslim ban. Well, he didn't. Yeah. But you said right. he did. No, I said the rhetoric. No, was you said he called it a Muslim ban. During the campaign. No, no, no. That's not, you added that since I proved you wrong. So are you okay with the ban? No. He did not, so you want terrorists to come in and kill you? If he's, if, if he's concerned with terrorists, the terrorists that attacked 9-11, how come he didn't put Saudi Arabia? So had he put Saudi Arabia in there, you would have been satisfied with No, it? I wouldn't be satisfied. So you still wouldn't be happy. So why are you asking that question? Because in the language, in the language of, of the executive order, it talks about 9-11. What does that have to do with the countries that are there? I mean, the, the people that came because the, we the cause 9 9 11 came from Saudi Arabia. They didn't come from, but they didn't come from Iraq. They didn't come from Syria. They didn't come from from these countries that are Yemen. Why are that were you banned. bringing up? You said you would not have been happy had he added Saudi Arabia. No, I wouldn't be happy at all because I think that he's is it targeting. wrong to protect your home first? No, no, no. There's not. There's nothing wrong. So with that. what is he doing wrong? He's protecting his home. There's. 
if you knew that that was the case, then why didn't he put Saudi Arabia? What's wrong with maybe protecting? He has, maybe what's maybe wrong? he has like special interests there. What's wrong his, uh, with protecting your disrupt home? Disrupting his hotel interests or something. What's wrong with protecting your home where you know where your enemy no, is? No, there's nothing out. wrong with that. I think so he didn't do anything wrong then? Like he didn't ban Texas and he, we had somebody who did a terrorist act. Listen a, to me. A president who did a terrorist act against he's Iraq. Pr he's protecting his homeland first. Kissinger was so a, he didn't a, do anything a war wrong. criminal. I didn't see him put Kissinger on the ban. Where is Kissinger now? Well, the United States. Where's Kissinger? Kissinger, Henry Kissinger. Right. Is he still in government? Well, he's a private citizen. He should be. He but should he's be not in, jail. in government, right? But he should be in jail. He's not in government, right? No, he's not in government. I rest my case. Uh -huh. Let's talk about what's happening. So you agree with me that he didn't do anything wrong by putting a ban on the seven states? No, no, no. There's no. I'm, I agree. I can agree with you, Your Honor, because you're like a good lawyer, that like a minority of people are are doing bad things. There's over a billion people that are Muslims. And the way he's talked about Muslims, he, he always cast this general during the campaign. Obviously, now he's the president. He, he's only focusing on tweeting and, and supporting his, his daughter, not getting booted out of Nordstrom, stuff like that, important things. That's amazing you're speaking that way. Let me ask, is there anything about the president that you admire? Nothing, absolutely nothing. You hate manhood? I hate bullies. Do you hate manhood? No, no. Are you a real man? Yes. <laughs> and what is a real man? A real man is somebody that treats people with, with decency and, and respect. Uh, a real man is not somebody who mocks the disabled. Is not somebody that calls people losers. Or, or But you, you're marking Trump and his family. So it sounds like you're not a real man. I'm mocking. You're doing what you said a I'm real mocking, man doesn't do, and I'm that's mocking, what you've been doing. I'm mocking the fact that they're taking advantage of our country. So you're, not, so you're not a real man? Wow. I survived the project, so, you know, if anybody wants to test me, then they can come after me, so. Does racism exist? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Racism exists? Yes, yes, yes. And where's your proof? Well, as racist the policies, you had Michelle Alexander, uh, the new Jim Crow, you had her an interview recently. Yeah, what a she, dummy, huh? Well, no. That lady is so dumb, no, I don't she's, know. She's you, a really you smart admit. woman. She's no, no, a no, really no. smart woman. No. I like her. You gotta admit, she's dumb. Right? I'm not gonna, for some reason, I'm like, I have to agree with all these different things. <laughs> <laughs> There is no way, she is so smart. No, no, no. No, no, she's a, she's a brilliant Did author. Did you hear the interview? I heard part of the interview, but and you I read saw how she could not answer questions. Well, people are not trained in, in, in certain disciplines. Like the way you interview, you're trained, you and Tavis and people like that, you know, over the years you become really good at it. But she's it's, a it's, liar. And see, the, th the thing about me, I'm, I love what's right. It's not like I've been trained to interview, it's just that I love the truth more than anything else. I love my country. I'm not an African-American, I'm an American. So I deal with reality, I deal with the truth. Where that woman and most professors nowadays, they deal in lies. And so when you have a conversation with them about, and you're putting the truth out there, they feel trapped because they are incapable of telling the truth. Wow, have you read her book? Yes. That's why I had her on the it's, show. It's, it's a, She's a lie, she made up stuff. She's insane, she's talking about the past. She's a nutcase. Well. I don't agree with that. I mean, <laughs> you, you make a lot of, of, of points and I don't agree with most of them. But you love that interview and you agreed with me because when you were watching that interview, you were going, yeah, that makes sense. Oh, no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> My final question. Did you have fun? Yes, you're very entertaining and very, uh, you have a very good way of asking questions. I thought you were going to put some vodka in there or something. <laughs> Real men only drink vodka. <laughs> Where's the tequila? There goes my run for governorship. <laughs> you couldn't read too much. Dicen que no se siente la despedida y dile al que te lo cuente que se despida. Next time on the 
fallen state. President Trump, the next four years, what would you like to see him do? I hope he just continues on the same path that he's on. He's the only one I've seen since I've been on the earth that all of his promises that he made, he just going down the list and he ain't slowing down. The dude's gonna do what he said he was gonna do. I said, this dude is on the right track. Thank you for watching The Father State. If you like the shows, I want you to subscribe here and donate here.